Is this mid? Yeah, it's me. Hi, my name's Molly Trammell from Deep Dark Tunnel. Uh, this is Sage. Hello. Hello. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Welcome to America. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> finally, finally I can come back. I'm really happy. Have you been here before? Or is this like your first tour here? No, uh, I've, be, I've been here many times. I toured mostly with my band from before, Club Cheval. Mm-hmm. We did the whole uh, U.S. And uh, last time I came to to the U.S. was to tour, but it was canceled because uh, of the COVID. So, yeah, I'm really happy to come back to tour. It's, uh, it means something. So you played D.C. last night, right? Yeah. How was the show? Tell me about it. Uh, it was good. It was good. It was uh, exciting to play again because even in France, I haven't played for two months. Mm-hmm. So I was really, really excited on my side. And I was really happy to uh, arrive in the... Uh, in Washington. I never played there uh, uh, before and uh, I was really happy because they were really like uh, fans of my music, they knew the lyrics, Mm -hmm. played my songs. So it was really something, it was a good start. In terms of like how the audience differentiate between like, you know, America overseas and then like the French audience, how is is it different? Uh, It's different because uh, in terms of uh, in France, um, um, I have maybe more audience and more more fans, so people know me pretty well in France. So in here, when I meet my fans, uh, I'm still a, a gem for them, you know, a gem sound. And uh, it, I'm I'm more niche in the US, so I know that in the I can feel that when they come to see me in concert, uh, it's like a, it's the kind of they tell to their friends, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, I make, I made, I made you discover to my friends. So, and I really love that. I, I love this uh, to have this special feeling uh, with my American audience. The feeling that something is growing, and um, in terms of clubbing, it's pretty different. You know, uh, in France, we are people are less looking at the DJ. You know, if you know what I mean. In the clubs, they are more dancing with each other. In here, people come to see you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They look at you during your set, and they take pictures, they take videos, and they love to when I have interaction with them. Uh, so it's, it's pretty different. It's more interpersonal, it sounds like. I like the term niche that you used. So in terms of like niches here, where do you believe you like fall into? I don't know. I, I, it's hard to put a, to put a name because of in here, it's. Uh, I think I'm more into the indie electronic music scene, something like that. I would say. A lot of your inspiration, I feel like, uh, harkens back from like French disco, French house, that whole enriching historical scene. And I feel like with your current work right now and your last album, Born a Loser, that's been out for almost a year, I feel like there's a big jump in creative process and output. Uh, do you think there was a big evolution in time between your EPs like Super Discoteca and other EPs like that between this current album you have now? Yeah, it's, it's pretty different because uh, when you raise an EP, you have to put all your ideas and all your, all your strength in one or two songs. So when you are working on an album like Born a Loser, I had time to and the space to develop more uh, my ideas, to experiment, experiment more, and um, it was this album was for me kind of a milestone. So I don't see it differently in terms of music, but more in terms of intention. I wanted to kind of. Uh, put the light on and totally explore my style. Yeah, totally. Now playing Moving Men by Mid, featuring Mac DeMarco. And 
something I really liked about Born a Loser is your collaborators, because I feel like a lot of the collaborators you've worked with emit like the same vibe as you do, like pool party, sort of like lax, but also like you're in a weird dystopian sort of like mirage. Yeah, mirage is the word I'm looking for. So like when it comes to like collaboration, what is the most important element and how do you like seek that out? Uh, the most important element is that I need to really love the artist I'm working with and his music. Uh, it, it could sound pretty cheesy to say that, but uh, it's really important to to be in studio together. Uh, I never did. I don't do no collaboration. Uh, for example, overseas, I always uh, I was in studio with uh, all my collaborators and. Um, and what I like with the collaborators on Bonnuzo is that they help me to explore more styles I really like and that I don't know how to do precisely. For example, Mac DeMarco is pushing and highlighting my uh, kind of uh, indie folk, indie rock vibe, and I love it. That's great, and I really love your conversation about collaboration and in terms of fan interaction, I really want to talk about your song Loverini and uh, yeah. how that process worked with Radio Nova. I know briefly that there was some fan interpretation when it went to the creation of that song. Now playing Loverini by Mid, featuring L'Imperatrice. Well, everything happens for a reason. the first collaborative song in the world and uh, so the idea was like to be uh, on YouTube uh, every day for two weeks mm -hmm. and uh, and every day people were looking at me in uh, in my studio and they were with the chat they were able to choose to help me to choose in between two chords in between two synthesizers uh, do we pitch up the song do we slow down the song um, and uh, after uh, I also ask uh, some people like uh, some fans or, or viewers to send me stuff like uh, oh we need uh, that kind of drum if there's, if, there's, if there's drummers watching send us stuff and we were listening all together choosing it was really really interesting to do this song like it was as if we were uh, 1000 in the studio it was uh, pretty exciting yeah, that sounds amazing. In terms of fan interaction, in terms of just frequent collaborations, I really want to talk about COVID-19, your live stream yeah. series that you did during the beginning and middle of the pandemic. Something that, yeah. not gonna lie, I tuned in live every once in a while. Uh, big fan. That's such a good name for it, too. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, actually, so actually the, the, the viewers also choose the name. At first, it was named Mid Morning Show, mm -hmm. and uh, and because it was the beginning of COVID, and it was kind of a new name, everyone was like, "Oh, COVID, COVID!" They were like, "Okay, that's the name of the show now." Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so for me, it was actually I was just back from Los Angeles, pretty uh, depressed because uh, uh, my all my American show and my tour was cancelled. So uh, at first, I I have to admit that I did it. Uh, uh, one side for me because I was like oh if I don't DJ for months uh, I will be totally depressed so I was like okay let's do something let's do it in the morning so uh, I can help people also to wake up and to think uh, to other things that the pandemic and uh, because at, the, at this time if you remember you wake up in the morning you turn the TV and it's pandemic everywhere so um, 
So I was like, okay, let's wake up everyone from, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and let's do a kind of a radio video show, uh, playing music, uh, talking with people. And it was uh, pretty amazing because a, a real community was uh, was created around the show and uh, on Discord, like the the viewers were talking with each other all day and even a couple uh, a couple was created during the show so it's really fun yeah and what was that sort of like initial feeling of like going from playing live shows to sort of like having your audience transition to this more intimate setting of like a virtual setting where like it's like there's a distance between but it's still heavily integrated yeah it's important for me like to use all the tools you have and especially during this tough period it's important to to be creative and for me it was the more exhausting during the pandemic was to be uh, to find new ideas new way of using the tools we have and but yeah for me it's important like uh, why don't, wouldn't i use the tools i have i mean uh, social media uh, youtube it's so easy i just uh, I just press rec and the world can see me. So it's important for me to to use and to be creative with all the tools we have around. That's something we've definitely seen more variation with over the span of the last year. And it's really cool to see like more like virtual shows. On that note, are you participating in anything virtual or hybrid, meaning like live and virtually broadcasted anytime soon? Uh, not not really soon, but uh, every time uh, in Paris when we did uh, my sh- my big uh, show in Paris, uh, we filmed it and we 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 played it live on YouTube also because uh, the show was sold out and lots of people uh, couldn't come also because of uh, this kind of weird period. So I was like, okay, it's important to it's important to also broadcast it uh, on my YouTube channel. But uh, to be to be honest, uh, it, it's way, and you can imagine it's way better to DJ online with a live audience than to perform online. I just saw you sold out Brooklyn tonight. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Claps, claps all around <laughs> for that. How's tour going so far? Yeah, it's just the beginning for now. So, and uh, it, it, it's always weird because uh, after spending a six, six months touring with my band as a live show, mm-hmm. uh, it's weird to go on tour by myself now for one month. So it's just the beginning, and uh, I'm really actually it makes me really really happy to be to be back on tour and to meet some people. Uh, it's part of my life, you know. And during two years, uh, I miss that. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like traditionally, before Born a Loser came out. Um, you know, from what I saw you on the internet and you were doing these performances, you were behind the decks, you were DJing. Do you feel like now that you're, while you were touring with your band and now that you're touring alone, it's a bit more freeing to uh, be able to perform one-on-one with your audience? Yeah, it's different. It's totally different. Like, uh, it's it's a bit less personal to DJ, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. When, you, when I'm on stage, uh, I sing, you know? I sing, I play music, so, and I play only my songs. So I feel like inviting me to DJ to a party, it's like if you invite me to party with you, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's good. It's good to it's good to have me as a guest. I'm a, I'm a great guest, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's totally different. What's your favorite party song? My favorite party song is... Um, oh, my guilty pleasure is, uh, is this song from... Uh, I made a... I made a, not a remix, but a, a cover of it live. It's a song from David Guetta and Kid Cudi. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Love guilty pleasures. I think it's time to ask the best question. What did you eat for dinner? Or what will you eat for dinner if you haven't eaten yet? Actually, I'm going to eat uh, to a Japanese restaurant with friends. Oh. Nice. Japanese, Japanese food is, uh, is, is good in New York, so I'm going. And I'm pretty happy to tour too because I'm seeing friends I'm not seeing habitually. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really happy for that too. Never, unless you truly would like to, eat from the falafel food truck. <laughs> Bad experience. <laughs> 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 Please. <laughs> 
thing for the advice. Yeah. Just a heads up. No, Mid, I was really curious and also excited to see that when I was perusing your YouTube, you had a karaoke version of your album. I was really curious, you know, I rarely see that from an artist. What made you want to create this karaoke version for fans to sing along with? Yeah, it's important because, uh, you know, my main audience is in France. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fr French people, they listen to songs, but they don't know the lyrics. And they don't care about the lyrics at all. <laughs> it could sound weird for you. But most of the people listen to American songs without uh, knowing what it, it's about. So it was important for me because uh, my lyrics, uh, my, my lyrics are important for me in my songs. So it was important. It was to tell the French people, oh, you can read the lyrics and you can sing along the song. Also, I feel like that's very like generous to be able to provide that to your audience who are also DJs, so that they could take your karaoke mixes and then just sort of elaborate off of it. Like in a collaborative effort. And I also made like a, an album, a, a video, which is the whole album uh, in one video, you know, so you can just listen to the whole album. And it's important for me, like a, when you are, when you have an album, not to just listen to the singles apart and to feel it, to listen to it as a, as a piece. Mm -hmm. So I made this too for, on my YouTube channel. We love um, the little memes you post on your YouTube. <laughs> what was that one called with the... Uh, Pepene, if I'm pronouncing it right, the uh, watermelon <laughs> video. Yeah, you know what it is? No, uh, what is it? What is it? Actually, um, I made a, I made a video uh, with a French YouTuber, which is the biggest YouTuber in France, mm -hmm. named Squeezie. And uh, it's kind of the French PewDiePie, something like that. Oh, <laughs> let's go. Now playing Time Time by Trey Degete featuring Mid. together uh, about the making uh, a song like like in the year 2000 and uh, we made that kind of a Romanian uh, electronic music nice it was really big really big in Europe like a kind of ozone maybe you don't know ozone but it was really really big in, in Europe mm -hmm. and so we made this song uh, for his video and the song became a number one hit in France wow and it's in Romanian because we we sang in Romanian in it with a we took a Romanian teacher to help us with the lyrics and stuff and uh, and the, and the song is is still in the top 50 in France it's on the radio everywhere but I thought it was just a joke and in this song I'm I'm saying Pepene and Pepene <laughs> <laughs> Because the, the lyrics are really funny. It, it says in Romanian, I'm eating a watermelon without no seed. Nice. Mm -hmm. What is this song yeah. called so that we could play it? Oh, you, you have to check it. It's re and you have to watch the music video. It's crazy. Uh, it's named uh, Trey Legete. T-R-E-I-D-E-G-E-T-E. -E -E. And you will find it. There is, a, I think, 30 million views already well, we'll definitely give that a watch crazy yeah what is the music video about it's about a, it's a cliche of the 2000 music video so it's a three guys who find the watches that can help them to time travel <laughs> so they time travel and uh, they go to uh, middle age and they go to the the western vibe mm -hmm. and then they go into the future or into a really 3d uh, uh, 3d future you will you will see it's yeah. really fun i love um the aesthetic that you sort of incorporate throughout your songs where do you draw inspiration visually to get this aesthetic uh actually it's like a 
it starts from what I like and what I what I watch on TV, uh, what I see in museums, uh, what I watch at cinemas, uh, and it it starts from my from my taste actually. And um, I'm working uh, I'm working hand into hand with a, a really great artistic director named Alice Moitier. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alice Mortier, she's doing um, music videos, photos, and uh, she even created with me. Uh, I did the French uh, music award uh, last week, and she created uh, the scenography. And I'm working hand to hand with her to, and she's crazy. It's, it's always good to have someone to to help you with the v- visuals. And I cannot do everything. We are working together, but uh, she helps me a lot. She made big stuff. Uh, even in the U.S., she took uh, Miley Cyrus pictures and stuff like that. Just wrapping up, I just want to ask you, do you have any plans for the future? You know, after tour, are you just sitting back and relaxing, or are you already working on your next release? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not relaxing at all. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm on tour till, uh, till I'm, die. I'm dead. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm doing, like, touring, touring, touring. Yeah. In France, in, Euro- in Europe. Uh, also in uh, Australia this summer. Do you have a favorite place you like to tour or perform? Uh, uh, I love to go to Asia, of course, like yeah. Japan, Korea. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm pretty happy to go back to Australia. I've been there uh, maybe 10 years ago. It was the first tour I did in my entire life. Yeah. Because I had a big, a big track there uh, at the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy, and also I'm releasing uh, the new version of Born a Loser for the one year of Born a Loser, oh. with new versions of uh, of some tracks and with uh, with new singles too, new songs, original songs for, to add to the. So I'm working on it too. Well, I'm excited for your set at Spy Bar. I always want to say Sky Bar, but at Spy Bar. So good luck with that. Will you be there? 21 plus. I am sadly 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, we're there in spirit. If you guys are streaming yeah. it, I'll be there. But oh, in okay. the virtual it, world. I will print you a fake ID. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, good luck tomorrow. And thank you so much thanks for crawling lot. down into the deep, dark tunnel with us today. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have Please a great be set. Be careful on the way out. Bye. 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 Now playing Born a Loser by Mid, off of Mid's debut album, Born a Loser.
and that was Born a Loser by Mid off of Mid's debut album Born a Loser. You can listen to this song on all places where music is streamable. Thank you so much for coming down to the deep dark tunnel with us today. I'm Molly Tremell, your professional tunnel guide here to show you the way. <laughs> Sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel is actually Mid. Are you an artist interested in being featured on Deep Dark Tunnel? Follow us on Instagram at Deep Dark Tunnel Radio for more information. The Lotus City.